Welcome in everybody to another episode of ZB's Horsepower Talk. As always, I'm ZB, Zach Brown, and joining with me, as always, is former 410 Sprint Car Crew Chief and Mechanic, my dad, Jeff Brown. Dad, we're actually together for once uh, at your uh, house. Again, at, yeah. Yeah, look at that. We're making this a little, it's a little more routine than anything <laughs> right now. Lots to go over today. We have NASCAR to touch on from Sonoma, previewing the first ever NASCAR Cup Series race at Iowa. And the only other race to preview this week is the both nights at Knoxville for the World of Outlaws. And we'll go over some of the, the high limit that happened, NHRA and IndyCar, some big IndyCar news that we'll uh, get to in a little bit. But obviously we start off with uh, NASCAR, Sonoma doubleheader with Xfinity and the Cup Series, the Xfinity race. Van Gisbergen has done it again, back-to-back -back at road courses. Obviously, he's showing how good he is on road courses. So uh, that was a very impressive race that he ran. He just methodically made his way through the field, and at the end, he just took off, and he was gone. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't no big surprise. I, it's one of those ones I wanted to pick him. I thought, nah, he's never going to win two two races in a row. Yeah, I thought the same of, thing. Some of the pitch he did, yeah. But he's, yeah, he's definitely uh, almost in a class of his own. Against the against the Xfinity guys, I'm actually surprised he didn't have a Cup ride for Sonoma. That's yeah, that's a little surprising. I think he does in the. Uh, I'm sure he does at the Chicago, so he can try to go back to back here in a couple yeah. of weeks. Uh, he's doing uh, pretty well. I mean, he's locked himself in the playoffs now, kind of building on that playoff uh, advantage now with two wins. Uh, Cup Series, Kyle Larson prevails and kind of uh, uses pitch strategy with having the best tires and. Truex stays out and has older tires, and he ends up running out of fuel at the end. Uh, Larson was just by far the fastest car. He was able to run down anybody. He was like four and a half seconds behind, was able to make up that time like it was nothing. Uh, he made it up with like eight laps to go, and he didn't look back. There was a lot more cautions at Sonoma than I expected. Yeah, it was surprising for, um, the, for the cup guys, for sure. Yeah, and I kept tuning in. I was like, there's another caution. And, I'm like, and I said it before. I was like, there's not going to be a caution unless somebody gets stuck. Well, apparently a bunch of people got stuck in the, uh, <laughs> in the dirt there. Um, I, I think Sonoma was actually a pretty good race. A lot of people agree that it was a very good race, and I, I think it is still one of the better road courses. I think the the pavement didn't. I didn't really notice too much of a different with the repave. No, just, it still raced about the way you would expect on Sonoma, anyways. Yeah, it just uh, the lap times are a little quicker. Um, they, they say Sonoma races like a short track, and then with all the cautions and uh, the kind of bumping and running, you, you kind of see that that uh, it does race like a short track. You know, Larson. Had the lead, but he had to pit. And so he was actually, I forget how many laps, 13, 14, 15 laps later than uh, the guys he was going to be battling for the lead. And when he came back out, he was eight seconds behind. Or he was a good out. amount behind. And, and he had to come through traffic. I thought, there is no way. But that, that car was really, really fast. I forget who he was racing with that came out. But... Larson came up through the field, and I forget who was came out right right behind him, and he did not come back and get yeah. up through the field at all. So he, that car of Larson's was really, yeah, pit strategy was probably the, the right call, but that car was also the fastest one there at the end anyway. And with that win, Larson now has the regular season points lead and just over Chase Elliott, who Chase Elliott's probably the biggest surprise this year as consistent as he's been. He finished fourth at Sonoma. Uh, so those two, th those two Hendricks have got it going on right now. Byron and Bowman have kind of fallen off a little bit, especially yeah. Byron. How surprising how much he's fallen off as strong as he was. I don't expect it to last too long. I'm sure it, it, all it takes is another win, another few top fives, and then you're you're fine. Uh, rather have the funk now than going into the playoffs. Yeah, you want to get hot at the right time, and towards the end of the seasons, you know, definitely the win you want to do it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what happened with with Byron. That's you know he would he started off so strong and whatever they had early, either everybody caught up to it or he lost that edge just a little bit right now. Yeah, he's still good, just hasn't been great. But this has been a could turn around anytime. Well, this has been a story with Byron though over the last couple of years. He's been so strong and everybody's like he's going to win the championship this year, and then every single year he falls off about this time. So maybe they've kind of learned what what they need to do. Uh, Larson's maybe pretty maybe hot with right the now, three so. wins in the bag, they've been testing some different things. Possible, you know, but I don't I don't I wouldn't try testing things. I would still try to go out there and win every single dang race and it, it'd be as consistent as possible because momentum is a big thing in the cup series. Whether if you don't if you don't think if your momentum doesn't matter, it matters for other people and if people other people feel like they're getting hot, they're going to tend to race better too, which I thought Cindric would actually race better at Sonoma the way he got that win. He was he kind of fell off on that race too. 
He's a good road course yeah, racer. Yeah, he's definitely a good road course racer. I, I had him in my fantasy, and I had to put him in my garage because he sucked. Well, you won fantasy this week. and Mar- you, you, you wouldn't have if Martin Truex Jr. would have ran out of gas on the final freaking turn. Yeah. And this just, if my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. So Yeah, so, well, we're still behind <laughs> significantly, uh, yeah. Mom and Fantasy. Yeah, I gained, gained 90 points on Mom, and I'm still like 100 behind. Well, we'll pre, we'll get our give our Fantasy here in a second. Going into Iowa, first time the Cup Series has ever raced to Iowa. We've been saying they we've been wanting them to go to Iowa for a long time. Finally, they're doing it. Iowa's got a repave. Christopher Bell's not too happy about it's it. It's got half of a repave. Yeah, well, they... Before we talk about that, let's give our power rankings heading into Iowa like we always do. Uh, our, our top one's probably exactly the same. Uh, so getting into Iowa, I'm going to crack open this, and so you probably will too. Bush Light Peach, it's new. Yeah. Uh, they're not a sponsor, but if, hey, if you guys but, want but to. But they want to be. We yeah. do work for beer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we saw always want. I wanted to try it. Oh, that's actually good. That's actually really good. I like that. Nice peach flavor um, aftertaste. Yeah, I like that. That's not bad. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, right. I, I drink ten or twelve of them. Um, all right, so power <laughs> rankings heading into Iowa. I'm going to give you my top five, and we probably have the same five. So at number five, I'm going to going to keep him there. Uh, I I think I had him there last week. Uh, Ryan Blaney. He was he was a solid run at Sonoma. Uh, he had actually a, he was in top ten, top ten, top five. Had a shot to possibly win it. The strategy up play, played out a lot differently for everybody, so it was kind of that was a big shakeup in it. But he got he's fifth in my power rankings. Number four, I'm keeping Brad Keselowski. He actually finished just outside the top ten. Everybody said he's trash at road course racing. Well, he's like, well, I'm, let me finish all right here. Which is he does have one or two wins at like Watkins Glen. Yeah, so. yeah. I'll take away you will. Number three, I moved him down from number one. Um, I've got or maybe number two. I've got Danny Hamlin at number three. Uh, number two, I actually moved up Chase Elliott. He's been very consistent lately. And number one, surprise to no one, I've got Kyle Larson after getting that win at Sonoma, and he's just firing on all cylinders right now. We'll get to it later. He's He just won at high limit, so he didn't want to win an Indy when we were there, but, I mean, I guess he's making up <laughs> for it uh, now. So our top five is slightly different. So at number five, he had a great run. I have Chris Busher in at five. Uh, number four, and Blaney is Ryan Blaney, which surprised me. He's normally not known for road course racing, but uh, he, he looked real strong. Uh, number three, I have Chase Elliott. Number two, I dropped him down one. We'll, we'll give him a pass for blowing up an engine. That really wasn't. Instantly. Yeah. So I got Denny Hamlet, number two, and I did move Kyle Larson back to number one. Yep. Uh, I'd, I'd be surprised if anybody's power rankings across the board are going to have Larson not at number one. He's... He's got the momentum now. Now, heading into Iowa, I don't have a trivia qu- Oh, I do have a trivia question this week for you. Uh, oh, okay. I, did, I did this earlier. Who are the active drivers in the Cup Series that have won at Iowa before? And there's oh. there's quite a few of them. Ty Gibbs? Ty Gibbs won. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek? No. Okay. Wow. Uh, Ryan Priest? Maybe? No. Hmm. I'm trying to read all the. Okay, I'm trying to think who was like recently moved up from Xfinity. That's the only ones that. Who's complaining about the repave? Oh, Christopher Bell. That's one of them. Uh, okay. Um. Who's, who who's won it every track on the Xfinity circuit at oh, some point? Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has won it. Uh, let me just go through it. And uh, this is including like truck series too. So oh, okay, uh, th- between Xfinity and trucks, trucks have raced at Iowa before. But Brad Keselowski's won there. Eric Jones has won there. Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s won there. Uh, uh, Christopher Bell, Ryan Blaney, Chase Briscoe, William Byron, Kyle Busch, Ty Gibbs, and Todd Gilliland. Wow, that's actually a lot that's more There's than I expected. One that's probably honest. not going to matter what the uh, experience is there, but. <laughs> But yeah, quite a few won there. I mean, they've raced a lot between the Truck Series and the Xfinity, and then you have uh, IndyCar there. I and mean, that would actually be pretty cool if they somehow were able to do a double header with NASCAR and IndyCar this weekend. Larson could just ran for McLaren. Yeah, um, seriously. And on that, no one's really sticking out besides John Hunter Nem- Nemechek in the Xfinity Series uh, at doing a double header. So, uh, which is shocking. I figured somebody would at least hop in a car yeah, and try a double like, header, especially like 
maybe like Ross Chastain would have jumped in one. Somebody, or, yeah, but surprisingly somebody. not. So Iowa is a uh, fun little track. I really enjoy doing it on iRacing. It's a lot of fun on iRacing. <laughs> also, I have a lot of success there. I, the, the way it kind of feels is kind of maybe like a smaller Richmond-type track. Which is actually bigger than Richmond. So it's a bigger Richmond type track because <laughs> it's a seven seven eighths of a mile, uh, you know, high high banked. Uh, it's a regular oval where Richmond's the D shape, yeah, D shaped oval. But yeah, b- before the repave, the Xfinity cars and the trucks really would put on a good race. There was there was multiple grooves, you know, as as the tires would wear, you gradually you know keep moving up and up. And uh, so now what they did, they repaved the inside groove only. And then in the corners, they put like a second groove in. So I don't know what the hell they think. Either do it all or nothing. I don't. Well, I wonder if they're going to add some PJ1 or something to add. Might have to do something to get. Because right now, at least from what this is what Christopher Bell was saying, I don't have any other reason to not believe what he said. But he said it is going to be a freight train and there's going to be no passing. But they used to say it for Bristol all the time, and you had to give them the bump and run. So if it races like that, the fans are going to love it. The drivers are going to hate it. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting, and it might come down to who's willing to run towards the outside. And if it rubbers up, you might have that lane come in later on. It, it might may very well be a, the fastest way to go around. I, I know the outside's there is a little bit bumpier. At, I mean, it's worn out a little bit, but... If it rubbers up, rubbers nice. I mean, I think it could be a potentially good win- race winning lane, possibly. Yeah, it's possible. I, I would think if they would put some PJ one in there to maybe get it going. But the one thing is, it's also going to be a Sunday night race. So, well, it's you know, it's, it's going to be a, cooler. It, so yeah, so it's it's going to it's going to start. I guess they're an hour Sunday behind. evening they're race. They're an hour behind and because it starts at seven Eastern time, so they're an hour behind. So it'll go from daylight to nighttime. It's three uh, three hundred fifty miles, give or take, at seven eight. So, give it's three hundred. It's the three fifty. So I guess yeah, they're going to do three hundred fifty miles. So three hundred sixty laps or something. Three hundred fifty laps, probably one of the two. Uh, which is just a little bit longer than the Xfinity race, which is two hundred fifty. Uh, should be a pretty quick race, honestly, uh, barring any amount of cautions. Uh, but I, I think it could be a good race. Hopefully, it is. Hopefully, uh. Well, the practice starts Friday this week. See how the drivers like it, and maybe those guys that we mentioned can use that advantage that have raced there before. We'll see. It's hard to really translate Xfinity cars, especially a couple years ago, to the Cup cars now. Yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't race like a short track because we know how bad the package is on these cars. They just don't put on a good show normally yeah. on the short track races. So, but it is a hot lot higher speed. You know, it's probably similar in speed to maybe Phoenix, which these cars, I mean, it's, it's completely different. Phoenix is flat and the whole deal, but it, it's also bigger. But speed-wise, it might even be it might even be slightly faster. I'm trying to Phoenix. think where it might compare to. Richmond might be about the... That's probably about the speed. It's, it's, it's not going to be as fast as Dover. For it sure. might actually be about as fast as Richmond gets. Maybe it's slightly faster, but it, I think it races very similar to Richmond. Um yeah, Xfinity is, is Saturday late afternoon going into evening, so it's going to go when like sunset is when it ends, and then it'll be a little bit later Sunday. So um, let's give our power rankings, then we'll give our picks. So um, NASCAR, not power rankings, sorry, fantasy lineups this week. Okay. Um, uh, don't have mom's pick. She's babysitting. Oh, I've got, I don't know, she, she didn't say. She, I, no, I can't remember. <laughs> I thought she did tell me. So let's give our uh, fantasy lineup. So I'll go ahead with mine. Good. So starters, I've got Joey Logano. He seems to run pretty well anytime they go first time anywhere. Noah Gregson. I'm using his prior experience at Xfinity kind of uh, as a potential okay. decent race. Josh Berry, he raced actually really well at Richmond. I'm using that logic as well. And he's traditionally decent short track racer. I've got Kyle Larson. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm just using his momentum right now, and he's going to be in Iowa all weekend, so maybe something will be decent. And I've got Ryan Blaney as well, using that prior experience at Iowa, and it's just in my thought process. And in the garage, I do have Christopher Bell. Okay. Uh, the feature matchups, Kyle Larson versus Denny Hamlin. I have Kyle Larson again. Momentum goes a long way. 
Denny is pretty fast on these short tracks, so we, that that is a little bit tricky because Den, uh, Denny blew up last race. He's probably going to come out really hungry in this one. Race one at Richmond, he's a fantastic short track racer. He's won a bunch of them already this year. Truex versus William Byron. William Byron just hasn't had any momentum. Truex had that heartbreak with losing, uh, running out of fuel at the end of the race. I've got Truex in this one. I think Toyotas and Fords will be again really fast. Uh, Joey Logano versus Ryan Blaney. I've got them both in my lineup, lineup, but Joey Logano always seems to randomly come out of nowhere of these tracks that no one ever races at. And Chase Elliott versus Christopher Bell. Chase has got some momentum, but I've got Christopher Bell kind of using the same logic before. And with him complaining about it, that'd be hilarious. He ends up running really well. As <laughs> saying, there's no passing. So, all right, go ahead and get yours. All right, some of mine are just kind of random and trying to use some drivers up. But uh, I do have Joey Logano, uh, Josh Berry, Chris Busher, Ross Chastain, and Chase Briscoe. And then randomly in my garage, I don't know really why I put this, I have Todd Gilliland in my garage. Hey, he's got that Iowa experience we talked yeah, about. Yeah. So maybe he'll so, run well. And my feature matchups, ours are mostly different. So I do have Denny Hamlin over Kyle Larson, William Byron over Martin Truex Jr., Joey Logano over Ryan Blaney and Christopher Bell over Chase Elliott. Well, this is the week one of us can maybe make roundup. Probably not. Um, good picks, the, good bets this week. Denny Hamlin, probably because he races great on short tracks. Yeah. And Richmond, good bets. Kyle Larson, you could probably put Larson any week as a good bet. It says avoid Kyle Busch. I honestly agree with that. He just hasn't been fast. No. Uh, Ro- avoid Ross and Chastain. He's... He hasn't okay. been fast. I would avoid it. Oh, my God, the sleeper once again is Chris Buescher. <laughs> he is once again the sleeper. He is always a sleeper. You know what, Chris, get a win so you're no longer a sleeper. That's right. And uh, all right, so our picks for Xfinity and uh, the Cup Series. Go ahead with your Xfinity pick. Xfinity, I keep picking him. Keeps letting me down. I'm going to try it again. I got Justin Allgaier. And for the Cup Series, I have Joey Logano. We have the same picks. Oh. <laughs> I picked Joey. I, I, I had him. Yeah, I was, I, I was like a new track. You got to pick Joey. Yeah, just... yeah I, for, I for sure was going to have Joey. Now he's going to crash. And I, I picked Justin. They actually have a really cool uh, paint scheme. It's a salute to all the farmers out there. A lot of actually really cool paint schemes that are salute to farmers out there. I don't have the uh, Bush Light Farmer one, but this is the Bush and Peach. It might be the corn car... That it is Chastain has so it is the Bush Light po- uh, porn. Yeah. <laughs> it's a porn car. No Bush Light corn car. It was like a salute to farmers. What yeah, Chastain yeah. does. So yeah, if y'all want to reach out for this too, we're gonna go. All right, let's go over just recapping real quick of the couple uh, series that happened. IndyCar, uh, Will Power finally gets a win, and I and I watched the. It was the same time as the NASCAR race. It was you, it's hard to just like pick which one you want, and. Will Power was able to use strategy in his favor. I know you didn't see it, so I watched a lot of the highlights. The highlights were fantastic. You saw everything you needed to. It's just how kind of how they they work with the uh, the outlaws too. Use use strategy to his advantage. Pit at pit at the right time. Pit crew did a fantastic job. Got him out in front, and there was no looking back. Will Powers had so many second place finishes over the last couple yeah. years. He he had like a twelve year win streak that got snapped last year where he didn't win. And he finally gets back on the win streak, and he's a points leader now. Yeah, uh, good for Will Power. He seems to be one of the the guys everybody kind of likes in IndyCar. Yeah. Just you know, it just seems you know, I don't know him from Adam, but you know, seems like a decent guy. Seems like he's always a popular popular driver when when he when he does well. He's been been around a long time. Well, it was a one two three finish for Penske as well with uh, okay. Mi- uh, McLaughlin and Newgarden up there as well. So yeah, Penske's got it going on in IndyCar. Uh, but uh, shout out to Newgarden had that. Uh, bad crash. Yeah, that was a nasty crash. That comes back and gets a helps get a podium finish. So, uh, just the sound when you watch that video of him crashing, it's fast. The the sound, it like, just it, oh, yeah, it's like it, holy cow. It, it just it just cut real loose on him heading into a, a corner, and surprisingly, and I was I probably jinxed him saying that hey Scott Dixon is never going to let a point lead uh, go away and instantly. <laughs> Gets like last. Yeah, well, I think I picked Joseph Newgarden this week, so yeah, it was better than mine. I think Sorry, I, I, I picked uh, Renus VK, and he like his car blew apart <laughs> uh, or something. But Road America is a neat track, especially, especially for them. For them, yeah, it is the, a great the, the track. The bigger stock cars, I don't like. Smaller, faster cars. With that, downforce. It was. That's, a, it that's was a good. Race. Nice it really was a good race. There was a lot of passing. A lot more passing than Formula One, and yeah, they. Well. They were, they were, there was 
quite a lot of action that happened. There was enough cautions that helped it keep it interesting. I think there was a caution lap one. There was a crash. Uh, so yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of excitement in IndyCar this year. It's been really good so far. Um, a lot of racing this year actually has been really good. Um, yeah, most the biggest of it's been good. biggest news out of IndyCar this week though is that Fox now struck a TV deal and they will be racing on Fox every single race next year. They actually just released their 2025 schedule as well. So Fox is going to have the double duty on Memorial Day weekend where it's the Coke 600 and the Indianapolis 500. So that that's going to have their TV ratings going up. That's probably a big reason they wanted to buy that to have that massive. Yeah. Now, if, they could, if they could somehow get the rights to Monaco, they wouldn't know why have to change their station. So, nobody <laughs> watches Monaco anyways. I don't even know. It's on. Oh, Brit- all the drunk writers turn it on while they're getting drunk, waiting. For I think it's on, on British TV or Sky Sports or something. I don't know. <laughs> they're never going to buy that, especially how expensive Formula One is for for some reason. Um, yeah, so that pretty much does it. IndyCar, they're not racing this week. They're they're um, back in action next week. And NHRA, just touching on the results from NHRA, I got my top fuel pick right again. Uh, yeah, you did good on that. I didn't expect, I never really ex- fully expected Schumacher to win, but good for, t- t- uh, good for Tony Schumacher getting back in the win column. Austin Proc wins Funny Car. Uh, Jake Coughlin wins in the uh, Pro Stock. And surprise, surprise, Gage Herrera won in the motorcycle. But shout out to Gianna Evaristo, who made the finals and been on yep. the show. So you guys haven't her. seen that yet. Go check out the episode with her. Uh, she's improving each and every week, building confidence. And she's a fun driver to watch, too. And she's got a great personality for the sport. So it's great to have that in the sport. Yeah, she's, uh, she's just a little sweetheart there. She's super friendly. We'll, we'll talk to anybody like you meet her in the pit. She, she's, you know... She definitely got to be a fan for Avery, just the way she'll spend. Because maybe she's not the most popular driver there, but but so that, that gives her the time to spend a little time talk yeah. talk to the fans. And it was nice on like when we were uh, when you were younger, we went to Maple Grove and Antron Brown was uh, running motorcycles. He took the time when he was talking to everybody, and, uh, and a lot it, was, of, it was really and super nice. It and was, it's really cool. A lot, most of those NHRA guys, they will interact with the fans because, especially they, if you do it. I think we went. It was either a practice or the probably that Friday, Friday, yeah, Friday or Saturday. So yeah. it wasn't like any like high pressure. And so there was it was really nice where they would spend a little. Extra and they have a lot of downtime too. Yeah, that. they would talk to you, you know, a little more. And, yeah, NHRA, NHRA has always done that right with fan interaction and fan appreciation. They just got. They need to work on their TV program. It's too long, and need to not put it on at ten o'clock late at night because it's just bad. I mean, East. I mean, West Coast people. Uh, they could see it, but we're not on the West Coast, and there's a lot of race fans on the East Coast, especially Indiana. A lot of the, they're where they're based out of. You would think they would have it. A lot of Eastern Time stuff, but they're uh, they're off this week too, so nothing to preview for for them. But the there's no telling who the favorite in the championship besides motorcycles is. Yeah, uh, like like Tony Schumacher said, coming out of nowhere. He, he's now. like, there's 12 cars that can win any yeah. given, and he was. He 11 was 11 and 12, 12, 12. Yeah, I think the finals was 11 and 12 together. So. Yes, yeah, so literally anybody can win. It, it's uh, it's Except impressive. for maybe Brittany Forrest. She really seems to be struggling. She is struggling and, randomly. And Steve Torrance has yeah. kind of been struggling. Because you pick him. So. Yeah. Uh, all right, that does, does for NHRA. Uh, we'll touch on high limit real quick, and then we'll give in our, get, finish off with outlaws like we always do. The... Uh, the High Limit Series, once again, been putting on good shows, except the one last week, uh, Rico kind of stunk up the, the, the battle. Uh, there was no battle for the lead. But battle the, for second. Yeah, coming up through was, was a much better and the, race. And the day before that was uh, Corey Day, who continues to impress in, yeah. in uh, High Limit. For eight, 18 years old. And he runs the living hell he just He thing. just run, has like, it looks like he's been running those things for and he's just, 20 years. He's, I mean, he's just, just confident in what he does, which is awesome. It's awesome to see because... And now he's, I've been saying he's probably the next Larson. And he had a, uh, he had that late model debut for junior. He freaking won. It yeah. was a, it, it was a smaller race, but he still won. It was his first, first, first ever asphalt race. He's like, oh, let me go win that too. <laughs> so yeah, I, his, his skill talent is very similar to Larson. Uh, we'll see how many, how much offers he gets in the future with potentially NASCAR. I mean, obviously Larson's got a little bit of connections that he. Yeah, I was going to say it helps having him. a guy like Larson in there that's yeah kind of came up that way and you know uh, and he probably would be the guy to be like look 
don't don't quit the racing that you love if you get into a top series. You know, yeah, make sure make that make sure that's either part of your contract or not yeah, part of your contract. Keep doing to what avoid you love. Yeah. That way, it it stays fun for uh, everyone. That was a big reason Larson wanted to stay. Wanted to go to Hendrick. I think Jeff Gordon was a big reason that hey, because yeah. Hendrick usually was like, no, I don't want my drivers racing anywhere else, and I think Gordon's like, no, they're going to. And it helps just fine tune their skills, and it, it helps with momentum too. You win in a different series doesn't matter if it wins a win somewhere, right. and that can change your entire season and other series as well. So shout out to uh, Corey Day on that. And Kyle Larson is continuing dominance. He won at Eagle Raceway. He's run the hell of that thing, and it was, it was a great battle fourth, for it was yeah. a great battle for the lead against Mark Carson Macedo. He just yeah, balls Carson it in Macedo, there. Carson uh, Macedo, Larson, and Brad Sweet. Brad Sweet all... came up to the towards the end. I thought Brad was going to get close enough to potentially try to slide on Larson. I would have liked to see that crossover move and that back and forth. You know they would have had a hell of a time. Because yeah, they were, they were so. yeah, when they were racing together, you know they were probably just enjoying that. And then the track started to get rubber down, and that was pretty much the end of the race. Yeah. You just kind of had to stay single file there. Yeah. It? It was a, it was a, it, I like that little track. I like Eagle. Um, that's Larson's third in a row that he's won there. Uh, it's definitely that definitely was, fun track. Uh, Those little bull ring tracks are fun. Yep, fifty five thousand five hundred fifty five dollars to win. So that was a uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, that was well. Larson had a good weekend. Yeah, he did all right. Yeah, he did all right. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, get into World of Outlaws now. Uh, Sheldon Hodgshields, the most recent winner, won last week, and then Giovanni well, last lap passed. Yep, yeah, and Giovanni Selzy won the the day before, who's been our my dark horse again all year. Uh, championships not over by any means. Uh, um, they're kind of closing back into David Grapple, so this is yeah. the, this is the time to get hot, and now it's time to get into like a little preview of what we could see at the Knoxville Nationals. High limits off this week. I think you're going to see a massive car count at Knoxville. I think a lot of PA guys are coming. 69K is going to be there. Darren Pittman. Darren Pittman's out there, and that's. A great guy to have at Knoxville. He's got a lot of experience. Yeah. So, I don't, has he ever won a national? I don't believe so. He's he's the driver that's got experience enough though that could potentially go out there and win at Knoxville and shake it up a little bit. This could be a preview uh, of the nationals. That's why they're going out there. Uh, you track just, conditions you, you could be run, pretty. You got to run Knoxville to really. Well, at least weather conditions. Weather conditions will probably be about the same. Could it's be. not going to. It'd be hot. about the same hot, and the track's never going to be the same. That's never been the same. It's just not. How, that's how Knoxville is. It's something different, literally every hour. It seems like, but the best, the best dirt track we we've ranked. So. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, by far, sure. they do such a great job with that facility. And, and there's, they actually saw a press release from Knoxville. Uh, they're expecting so many 410 cars. The, the 360s are going to be there this weekend, too. They're limiting the uh, 360s to, to only running anyone who has point uh, the track points. Oh, wow. So they're not going to let... Somebody out, do double out. duty or something. They're not going to let outsiders come in with a 360 and just get more laps. Like Sammy might have tried to do that, too. Yeah. Because I know he's got his 360. He might have tried to run. Well, if, I mean, if he's run any Knoxville before and actually has points on the track, he would be eligible. That's true. But, you know, say, like, just, you know, say David Gravel wanted to run. A run, a, do like a double duty. To or like, uh, say, Macri would, you yeah. know, because he does run some 360 stuff and yeah. things like that. So All right. Well, um, let's uh, I go ahead with our uh, the, our picks for Knoxville. I don't know which, uh, which driver exactly. I'm willing to bet Larson's racing. It's already going to be in Iowa this weekend. So I, I see him running at least one of those races. Yeah, I, I, I think he, it's Friday, Saturday. I'd be shocked if he's not running both. And they don't race till Sunday night. Yeah, I would be shocked if he's not racing. But I'm not gonna put him. I'm not gonna pick any outsiders besides outlaws in this one because I'm not 100 percent certain. So I'll go ahead with my picks in outlaw. So Friday night, I'm going with the king of Knoxville, the guy that's the best active driver at Knoxville right now. I got Donnie Shots. Who has kind of been under the radar right now? He kind of, he definitely needs a a good run. And for Saturday, this guy's been on a roll. I'm picking him once again. I got Sheldon Hodenshield. He's been on such a roll lately. And again, this is one of those things. Momentum goes a long way in all the series. And I I'm, I've got a feeling that he might do well this weekend. So Sheldon's probably going to win because I'm not going to pick him this week. <laughs> He'll win on so, Friday where I did. So pick. first night. And, and this guy has really not been anywhere, but he, for some reason, gets around Knoxville really well. I got Logan Schuhart for Friday night. And then how do you go against David Gravel? That's true. And 
David Gravel last week. Flips that car. It was destroyed. They, they rebuilt that son of a bitch in about three minutes and got back out there and had a it's, good fight. It's, it's, it's unbelievable it's how those, those guys, guys do that. Yeah, it's it's amazing. That's crazy. My brain saw, don't work out because I saw it. I'm like, oh, there's no way. Because I've seen him like fix like a, a front, front end. end. Yeah, it was a, it was wings and everything. I was like, hold. I was like, God. oh, he's done. Nope, he comes back out. It's in, it's insane. So, all right, well, that does it this week. Next week is the the High Bank Nationals at Houston's. So. That's fun, an awesome track. That starts Wednesday. That's a lot of racing next week for yeah. them. So their mini nationals is what they do. Yeah, that's um, an awesome. That's an awesome little racetrack. That's uh, that's one to go see for sure. Well, once again, shout out to Bushlight Peach. You guys want to send? Yeah, us, that was very good. If you guys want to send us out some stuff? Uh, send us a message, uh, please. It's all all the information is on the YouTube channel. <laughs> if you want to reach out, we uh, we would really much uh, like that because we like beer and uh, beer and racing goes well together. That's right. Uh, make sure you follow this on. Oh, anywhere you get your podcast, check out the YouTube channel, like and subscribe to it, and follow on all social media platforms as well. Until next week, we won't be together next week. We'll do a virtual like we usually do, but we will see you guys then. All right, bye, everybody.